you need to know as a student what is a model town board. So, when you know what is a model town board, it will be easy for you to, ma to maneuver and to obey the rules that we find in a model town board. Now, for example, what is a model town board? Thank you. It is a representation of road networks. That roads are represented by the model town board. That is, is through the model town board that we can uh, understand well how uh, modern cities look like. So they represent our roads uh, on a model town board. So another point to remember is that uh, Another point to remember here is that a model town board has got rules. The first rule of a model town board says use the shortest route route without using parking. It means like that. Use the shortest route possible without using parking route. That is the first rule. Now the second rule says use the wrongest route using parking. And now C, use parking route as the only option. Now, what does this mean? On a model town board, you are supposed to use the shortest route, most correct route, without using parking route. Then, if there is no short route, you are now allowed to use the longest route. You go far, but most correct route, without using parking. Then now, the third rule says, use parking route as the only option. Now, let us go to the Real fact. Now suppose you are given this vehicle. Suppose you are given this red car to drive it behind the yellow car. Now we want to consider the shortest route and the most correct route without using parking. Now the first route is this one. Put on the engine of my vehicle. Look on my right hand side. If the roundabout is safe, then I make a U-turn. I'll be behind the red car. Now, which is this longest route? I've used a shortest route. Now, which is this that is longest route? Now, instead of coming here, making a U-turn, now instead, you use O-turn after ensuring that there is safety from the right hand side. Then proceed, indicate to change lanes. Proceed, stop for pedestrians. Proceed, indicate and turn. Proceed, indicate and turn, indicate to change lanes. Then make sure the roundabout is safe from the right hand side. Then make a U-turn. You know I've done the same thing but I've used a long route. That is what they mean. Now, what about use parking route as the only option? Now, let us see. For example, now, our vehicle is here. And you are told, drive 
the, the red car to be behind the yellow car. What you do, you start your car engine, look on the right hand side, then make a O turn, 270 degrees. Then of course, indicate to change lanes. Proceed, then proceed, then stop for pedestrians to cross. Then proceed, indicate and turn, proceed, make sure it is safe from the right hand side. Then enter after indicating. Then indicate and use the controlled parking zone. Then if it is safe, then you cross, then come this way. Then go this way, proceed, join the immediate lane. Then join the third lane, then so the fourth lane, then you'll be behind the yellow car. So what I've used, what I've done, I've used the shortest route, most correct route, without using parking. Then I've used the longest route, most correct route, without using parking. Then I've used parking as the last option. Now, when do you use the first option? We use the first option as the first one. Then if there is no short route, we are allowed to use the long route. And when can we not have a short route? A road can be blocked. And maybe that is the only way you can use a long route. So if there is no short route, make sure you use a long route. If there is no long route, then make sure you use a parking route. That is how it goes. Now, after this, let me talk about uh, uh, parts of a model town board. Parts of a model town board. Now, when we talk about parts of a model town board, when we talk about parts of a model town board, there are quite a number of things to consider or points to, consi to consider. Number one, what is found on a model town board? So first of all, we can see anything that is in black is called roads. Everything that we see, it is called roads. So we are able to see number one, roads. Then number two, we are able to see the roundabout. Okay? We asked what a roundabout is. We said roundabout is a form of junction where vehicles move round to get or connect their appropriate lanes. So we answered that one. So we talk about roundabout. Then now we talk about uh, we talk about uh, parking sections. That is controlled parking zone and fresh parking zone. In a controlled parking zone, want to talk about it? In a controlled parking zone, remember we park from far left. In a controlled parking zone, we park from far left. What does it mean? It means if this is my entrance, I need to park from far left. And if this is his entrance, you have to park from far left. Then point number two, we park using a forward gear. Then we get out using a reverse gear. Then another point, we park saloon cars only. So those are very important points to remember. And again, your entrance should not be your exit. That means where you use as an entry, don't get out using it. So that is how it goes. And again, this is giveaways on controlled parking zone. So those are very important points to remember. Then we have what we call uh, 
uncontrolled parking zone. So, in uncontrolled parking zone, uh, sometimes we call it general parking zone. This is a type of parking where we can find saloon cars and bigger vehicles. So, we park it general. It is, only, it is not for saloon cars only. You can find saloon cars and even bigger vehicles. So, in uh, uncontrolled parking zone, which is also called uh, control, uncontrolled parking zone, uh, you can park using a reverse gear. Then you can get out using a forward gear. So, uncontrolled parking zone, you, you can park from anywhere, depending where the space is. And don't expect to be controlled in fresh parking zone or uh, uncontrolled parking zone. So those are very important points to mark on uh, parking zones. Then I have to talk about dotted lines. Dotted lines and continuous lines. So in white dotted lines, there are these ones. So first of all, you have seen them. When you are here, you can change lens. When you are here, you can, you can overtake. Okay? So when you are on white dotted lines, you can overtake, you can be overtaken, and you can change lens depending where you are going. Those are very important points to also remember. Then we have white continuous lines, as I said. We cannot change lanes. We cannot overtake. And even other road users cannot overtake us. That is the meaning of white uh, continuous lines. Then, of course, we have direction showing arrows. They help us to know the direction with which the road is facing. That is the importance of white, uh, I mean, uh, uh, direction showing arrows. So, after that, I need also to talk about, uh, I need also to talk about uh, a two-way traffic road. So, so on a two-way traffic road, there are quite a number of things that you need to see. A two-way traffic road, it is where vehicles move in opposite direction. So, you can find it here. A vehicle going this way, another one going this way. Then we are able to call this one a two-way traffic road. Then on a two-way traffic road, we have what we call, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 pedestrian crossing. This is a placement for pedestrians to move from one side of the road to the other side of the road. So this place is meant for pedestrians. The place itself is called a pedestrian crossing. Then we have a yellow continuous line. We also have what we call yellow continuous line on a yellow continuous line this is what divides a two-way traffic road and also it divides a one-way traffic road minor then we have seen the functions of yellow continuous line then we have a central pavement a central pavement also divides a one-way traffic road major. So we have seen uh, we have seen central pavement. Okay. 
I have said separation of two-way traffic road and also I have said uh, it also separates a one-way traffic minor. So it's good to remember all these points. Then I have said, of course, a central pavement. It divides central pavement. It divides a one-way traffic road major. So these are points to always recall or remember. Now, after that, uh, the, it can be uh, we are coming to uh, an end of our uh, teaching today, but uh, as usual, I have to ask very few questions so that we equip ourselves well, and also I, I also advise you how you should look when you are going for a national uh, uh, NTSA test. That means a driving test. So I'll prepare you more because this is the last day we have before you go for that driving test examination. So thank you very much. Unless there is a question, I need to go straight to the to the to, to the questions.